Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Reels Talk with Amanda and Omar. Today, we're going to be doing our review of Bumblebee, so stay tuned. Welcome back, all of our mentees. Today, Omar and I are going to be talking about Bumblebee, which just hit theaters this weekend. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be giving you a review of it. It was written by Christina Hodson and directed by Travis Knight. Now, I know Travis Knight did Kubo, which is... Yes. Love that movie. Yes, but wonderful what it, film. Christina Hutchkins? Hudson, Hodson. Whatever. What did yeah. she do? She um, is going to actually be writing Birds of Prey, the upcoming Birds of Prey, coming out, I oh, think, in 2020. Okay. And possibly Batgirl, which is also coming out. Yeah, you know what? It's DC, so those products yeah. may get canceled. <laughs> All right, let's get... But let's, hopefully she'll get to write it. Let, let's talk about this movie. Yeah. Uh, I come from the I hate Bayformer movies I hate Transformer live action movies Transformers number two was the death of the American cinema to me because it did so well at the box office and I was wondering was how movie. this horrible movie did so well yes after that it just became one big blur I was not excited for this that first trailer did nothing for me the second trailer when I saw all those little throwbacks to the G1 characters which eggs, yeah. by the way this review is going to be spoiler free but there are some things that happen in the trailer we may talk about. Yeah, that's so, fine. Yeah, that's uh, valid. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mom. Um, okay. So, that second trailer, I was like, okay, now you've got my attention. I'm kind of excited about this movie. But let's give you a quick plot yeah. synopsis there, Amanda. Yeah, quick plot synopsis. So, basically, we are back in 1987. Woo! So, in what the prime year. Transformer time. <laughs> yes, I was two years That old. was three. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, where Bumblebee is finding refuge in a small California town, and he's discovered by Charlie, who is played by the amazingly talented Haley Steinfeld, who is pretty much going through her own um, familiar issues and coming into her own as an adult. She just turned 18, it's her birthday, and she's dealing with a lot of family drama and things like that. So we yes. have these two characters coming together and becoming allies and friends trying to take on the Decepticons <laughs> and the U.S. government and bullies. So And bullies. Yeah, That's so right. let's get into our analysis, Omar, what we thought the film. So what's, what is your overall, you know, let's start talking about the plot. How did you feel the plot rolled for you? Okay, I will say, without giving anything away, we know that a lot of this movie is on Earth, of course, from the yes. trailer. But we know some of it, through a series of flashbacks, is done on Cybertron. I will say, as a Transformers fan, I was giddy as a schoolgirl <laughs> when the opening shot is Cybertron and we get to see all these, I'm not going to say who, but we get to see a lot of throwback characters that you're like, oh my God, it's so Oh my God, it's so Oh my God, it's so <laughs> it, People we haven't seen in the trailer, right? Of course, we see Optimus in the trailer and we get Shockwave and Soundwave and a lot of the voices that you hear, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, is that so-and-so. But anyway, it's wonderful. I loved it. And it was very cartoony. It wasn't done in the style of like Bayformers where everything looked dirty and surreal almost. Almost, it, everything was in CGI, but it was just it was, done in a style well where done CGI, it to reminded me of my childhood. Yes. So by the time we get to Earth, you know, he takes on the form of a Volkswagen be Beetle. That's where he becomes friends with Charlie. I thought that was a really cute relationship between him and her. Both of them had lost... Something. something and both of them came together because of that bond i thought the emotional connection between both of them was really sweet uh there are moments that i was like oh man i really wish that she was part of the transformers <laughs> universe instead of the wit wikis yeah. but so that is one thing i was going to say i went into this thinking is this going to be a hard boot is this going to be a soft reboot is it going to be a prequel and coming out of it i get more of a I guess this is a prequel slash yes. soft boot because it is starting over a new universe in the 1980s. Yes. Because we see, you know, Transformers show up on Earth and we can see where they can spawn off some sequels. But then they also... They allude to stuff that happens in the Bayformers or well, future things yeah, that Yeah, you see a, a character, I'm not going to say who, that kind of has something to do with the Transformers, Bayformer movies. Yes. And you can see things tying together that way. But I thought that was a really cool way of doing it. Setting it in 1987, you mentioned that the budget was lower than the previous Transformers yes. movies. so it was, I can, I can significantly. See, I can see that in the way that the CGI works, like the way they transform. Yes. For example, when Bumblebee transforms as a faraway shot of the actual transformation instead of the mechanical parts like the, in the Bayformer movies. Yes. Where it's almost like a three minute transformation in the sound effect. <laughs> By the way, is like the cartoon. So it's kind of like a throwback to that. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed that part. Even so, they were hiding the fact that it's a lower budget by doing a 
quick little camera trick like that, doing a faraway shot of the transformation. Well, I, th I think the faraway shot of the transformation also worked well because whenever I saw the transformations, even the fight sequences in this, it, there's a lot more wide shots. It's mm -hmm. not very up close. You actually get to see the fight sequences happen between the robots. It's not a lot of up close things happening. And I think that helps just show the action better and the transformation. The Transformers in the Bayformers, when they actually transformed, it just was just too much. Like so much because it was so close and you didn't really know almost, what's going on. Well, you it was almost couldn't really see the, what was going on. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, but the Bayformers were always more organic. Like these were living creatures. Yes. This felt more like a cartoon. Oh, it's a quick transformation. You have the sound effect. And it happens. And then they transform. Yeah. Wonderful. That's all I need. I don't need this convoluted transformation. To show where what's happening. Body parts, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so I really enjoyed a lot of this movie. I came out of this movie, I thought it was a great plot. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the most original plot, but it was a great plot. It was. It fun. reminded me of E.T. Like the, a lot of those aliens going. Actually, to Earth, you're right? right. That's a yeah, good comparison. Yeah, it really pretty much was very similar to a lot of those aliens coming to Earth types of movies. And I kind of made that connection when they're watching because it takes place in '87, so yes. the families went. This is not that big of a spoiler, but they're watching Alf on television, right? Oh, Alf Which came is out in '87. That's alien life form. <laughs> the family finds an alien and they, he lives with them and he hides yes. with them. So I'm like, <laughs> oh gosh, it is kind of like E.T. Okay. So yes. yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. The plot is very similar to E.T. Yeah. Instead of Bayformer movies, like this huge war. Yes, we, we, we are aware that there is a war happening and it might come to Earth based on the trailer. But this is more about a connection between a girl and her first car. Yes, and I think that's what differentiates this film from the other films. And I think that's what makes it better because they spend time to let you get to know the characters. Yes. You get to know Charlie before she even interacts with Bumblebee for the first time. We get to know so enough about her to really start to care about her so much so that i'm usually the guy that's like oh god more humans roll my eyes you know i don't, yes. roll, my, I don't roll my eyes let's clarify that but i that really aggravates me when they focus so much on the humans and less on the reason why i came to the theater Was to the, watch yeah. giant freaking robots transform <laughs> beat the shit out of each other but yeah so much so that i'm like you know i kind of like charlie and even her geeky boyfriend, or I'm sorry, her neighbor friend. That, yeah, whatever. <laughs> he kind of grew on me too by the end. But I really enjoyed this. I'm going to go watch it again. I'm going to take my kids. And I strongly suggest it to anybody that's a huge fan of Transformers growing up. Because I felt like Bayformers was always made for a new generation that yes. was not mine. My generation went to go see it because we had connections to the toys. We had connections to the, to the cartoons. And they kind of suckered us in with Peter Cullen doing the voice of Optimus Prime. This felt more like a movie for us to come back and be like, no, no, it's okay. Look, it can't be all just Bayformers. We can have some fun and you guys can still remember the good times you had with your toys. That's what this movie felt yes. like. That's my spoiler-free analysis <laughs> because I really want to dive. Amanda won't let me, but I really want to dive really into all the Easter eggs it. because, oh my gosh. Yeah, and there were a ton of Easter eggs. There was one that I'm pretty sure Omar got really excited about yes. Um, yes. during a scene where they had some bullies that were yeah. picking on Love, Love the soundtrack. Love the oh, soundtrack because the whole time a, I'm like, I thought a love song to the '80s. It well, I was. thought the whole time I'm it like, was. I thought this took place in '85. So I was looking at you, going, that song came out in '87. They're wrong, and then it turns <laughs> out that the movie takes place in '87. Yeah, exactly. I'm an idiot. Yeah. No. So, but it, it had a lot of great elements. It was a really enjoyable film. Something that was much needed. I know it's a prequel, but I almost feel like it's also a soft reboot of the Transformers that we've seen from the Bayformers. Because to me, everything looked different. The scale of the robots looked different, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. I don't think they looked gigantic and massive, but they looked big enough that they would be imposing, but not so big that it just was out of the world. Shit, let them reboot that franchise. Yeah, I, I would be care. happy I'll be with good it. with that. All the characters are enjoyable to me. Okay. I enjoyed so you all really the enjoyed it. Yes, I okay. did. And the voice acting was fun too. The major Decepticons, one of them is played by Angela Bassett. Yes. And that was great. Yes, I, I thought the voice acting the voice. was both surprising and like I said not going to give any spoilers away but I thought it was really surprising to see some people take roles of what characters yes uh, now that's your overall analysis yeah. you really enjoyed it mm -hmm. like are, is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we give our final score um, well another thing that's interesting about this film is that it also clocked under two hours which is the first Transformers film to do that and you think okay well that means they're cutting corners and not putting enough story into it mm. but I don't feel that way at all I felt we got just we just got exactly the kind of story we needed. I could have used a little longer. And why film. do you say that? Just to get me more tied to the other characters. Like I feel like there was a plot building with her and the school and her geeky uh, neighbor. Neighbor. That 
I was okay watching <laughs> 20 more minutes of that kind of bullshittery instead of the yes. main the main storyline, which is Bumblebee trying to stop the Decepticons. For what it was, two hours, sure, that's yeah. good enough. And and they it, with the two hours, it did like for instance, uh, John Cena's character, Agent Burns. Maybe his, downside. Downside, yeah. To he, my, maybe at least for me, he was. Maybe my, that what? was too much of a caricature versus real acting of what a Agent Burns or what a F an agent of the government should act like or the military. So I haven't, I haven't talked about anything negative and I think that's one of my negatives. It was was miscasting. I don't know, John, I I never watched wrestling. So, I mean, if this, (laughs) you know, I'm I'm sorry if I'm offending any wrestling fans, John Cena's acting is kind of interesting to say the least, at least this character. I don't know what he's trying to do in the film, but it's too over the top. Uh, too over the top, and I don't know which way he's going. Is he serious or goofy? Like, I don't get his kind of character. You the way he delivers. Direct- no, it's not direction, it's just the delivery of the lines. That's a good point. But that's seriously one of the few flaws. A couple of other things is some of the dialogue. No way that we would have used that in 87, just saying to some of the people that lived back then. So, the if other- you're going to be a purist for the 80s, the dialogue. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> do it right. You gotta do it right. But, uh, but a lot of the things, yeah, I loved. So, those yeah. are just two, two, two things about it that. And, and that very minor thing that I said about yeah. I wish a lot of uh, some of the movie had been a little bit longer just to keep exploring some of that stuff at the school and with her character. Yeah. And it'll be interesting because, in, you know, we wonder if she will be back. She may not, but mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if they let Haley Steinfeld return into that role because I think she did an excellent job. So before, without giving spoilers away, yes. before we give our final score, is there something you want to see in a sequel? A sequel oh. prequel? Sequel three. Well, see, I'm a Transformer guy, so I got all kinds of shit well, I want to see. Well, honestly, I want to see more of um, the Transformers. Megan Fox? Not Megan Fox. <laughs> Never Megan Fox. No, but I really would like to see more of the Transformers. Um, Optimus Prime and everything like that come together and see more of them interact on Earth. And I would like to see Haley Steinfeld's character back. I uh, really enjoyed her and Bumblebee's connection, so. Okay. I also want to see more Transformers. <laughs> Because when you hear them talk, you're like, oh my gosh, can't they just make a whole movie about this whole thing in Cybertron? It is so wonderful, and I can't wait, if there is a sequel, if this movie does well, mm-hmm. that they green light that sequel and they make it more about the Transformers themselves yes. and the war that's happening and how they're going to bring it to Earth. So, yeah. final score. Amanda, final score. what would you give it? All right, so I think my final score has to be an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Mm-hmm. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. There you go. Not the perfect movie, but... Far better than anything it that the Bay Farmers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It brought back a lot of uh, nostalgia to me. Yeah. And introduced me to new characters that I kind of really felt about towards the end. So I kind of want to see where they go from here. That's wonderful. Awesome. But we want to know what you guys think as well. So make sure to um, hit the like and subscribe button. Comment down below. Let us know if you agree with our review, if you've already seen it, what you're looking forward to seeing from the movie as well. And also don't forget to follow us at all of our social media channels at at NearMakeCon. So until next time, everyone, um, remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. We're not doing Stay Minty anymore? Stay Minty, my friends? No. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another... Oh, I already did that. Yep, you did that. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to another... Yep. Mm-hmm. Just look, just assume I'm always ready. Okay, okay. you're I'm always ready. Okay. I'm always ready. I'm you're always ready. ready. Welcome back to another episode of Real nope, Talk. Do that again. Okay. I was not ready. And welcome back. What? Do that again. Yep. I look like an idiot. That was yeah. fine. <laughs> Stay tuned. Whoops. Pointing. Hutchins, dude. Of course. Of course he doesn't. No, it's all fake. Fake news. <laughs> Hashtag Amanda is fake. <laughs> what does that even mean?